How's it going everybody? I'm Drifty from Driftwood Gaming and this is an RPG Maker MV tutorial on how to make a farming system. So I'm going to be honest right from the beginning this is a little more advanced and probably going to be a little bit longer than the normal tutorials. So I'm going to try to do my best to just be straightforward and um, cut out a lot of you could do this, you could do that and kind of just show you the, the way that I did it. Keep in mind that this is a template and you can change it however you like to and, and make it into any type of farming system that you like it to be. So let's start off. I'm just going to illustrate what it's going to look like current final version. You'll have plots of land and when you go to the plots of land you can interact with them and plant seeds or do nothing. Um, a list of the seeds that you currently have in your inventory will populate the list. These should be separated from your items. They're going to be considered hidden items, but you can also change that. Let's just say carrot seeds. We'll have animations, sound effects. All of that is arbitrary and completely up to you. Um, as they start growing, we also have a progress bar that appears right here above them. Or, yeah, above them. And if you interact with them while they're growing, you'll see that they have um, a progress marker indicated by the percentage of the way that they're done. Um, let's plant a few more as we wait for the bar to go up. The bar will increment in um, every 10%. So from 0 to 9%, it'll have that little tiny mark. And then as it goes up, you'll see this one is probably in between yeah, 11 and 20%. The um, progress bar will go up. And I'm going to fast forward now a little bit to show you what it looks like when you're ready to harvest. So stay put. <clears throat> Keep in mind while your farms are growing, you can always leave the map and come back and all of the progress should be the same. They actually keep growing as you're on a different map because we're handling this with a common event and we're using a plugin to save event location so when we get into the engine I'll go over the plugins that you'll need to use in order to make it work without having other bugs. So we'll fast forward a little bit more here. Due to the nature of the common events, the farms and other timers will stop when you're either in a menu like this or if you're in combat. So currently all the farms will be t uh, paused while you're fighting. But as soon as you leave the combat scene and you're back on scene map, they resume to where they were. As your plants get closer and closer to being finished, they switch through uh, pseudo phases and the phases will also change the graphic um, so that they look different. You can see it was just a dirt plot when they started and then half until they get to about um, I think 70% of the way, they look like little green sprouts and then as they become um, passed into the third phase, they have like a little bit of a lighter green color to the tips of them and then when they finally finish they'll have a different look depending on what type of seed you planted and we're going to use one variable to control all of the, um, the the types of seeds so you can have as many as you like but you'll have to provide graphics if you want them to look different of course this one's almost done 93 percent when it finally finishes and gets to 100%, the bar should um, disappear as soon as we interact with it. So this one's 95, 
and optionally you can do other things like add experience when you harvest crops and whatnot um, and do gab window text you can see that we're going to we're about to be spammed with gab window text for um, if the player is in the dungeon or something and their plants are finished growing you'll get notifications that your your plants have finished growing and you can come and harvest them now you can see the final product they look different because we are growing four different things we get a notification from the gab window and we get a sound effect as well when we decide to harvest them we interact with them and here are your fresh uh, carrots do you want to harvest them let's harvest them animation sound effects it's all arbitrary up to you what you want it to look like uh, you've obtained five fresh carrots um, I'm allowing the player to gain experience from harvesting so we actually leveled up when we harvest, harvested these plants. So we got our gab window spam from planting everything at the same time. Let's harvest our fresh taters and we obtained two. We're getting a random amount of experience between I think 200 and 500 but like I said it's arbitrary. You can set that to be whatever you would like it to be and we're getting a random number of the item we're harvesting from two to five and we're leveling up and we get these items you can continue to go on and plant more things if you want and restart the timers but that is the example of what this product will um, this system will look like um, something like that um, in your game. So if that interests you and you want to replicate something like this in your game, it's not um, super complicated, but it'll be a little bit of work, and let's jump into it now. Okay, so you decided you want to do a little farming system. We're going to do one plot of land, because once you understand how the first plot of land works, you just replicate it. You'll need their own switches and mostly their own um, variables, but you can reuse some of them. So, we'll need three events and a number of switches and variables per each plot. And we're going to use this with um, common events in the database. And we're using a plugin from Yanfly as well. So we're using Yanfly's save event locations. This is going to make sure that if our plants because of the nature of the way that it's working, um, I'm actually moving this event over on top of another event. And since this is the base, the first location of it, if we leave the map and come back when the plants are ready to be harvested, without that plugin, the plant will not be where it's supposed to be. So we do need that plugin for this and this note tag, save event location. So let's look at the smaller of the two events, of the three events. Uh, first, which would be the timer. So the timer, it looks like a lot, but it's really not a lot. It's very, very simple and easy. So we're going to have an image that's got, um, I guess you, you don't need to have this exact image, just anything that shows increments from 1 to, to 10, and um, have 11 different pages. So I'm going to go through and show you the way that I've done it. I recommend that you keep the names of your switches and variables very similar. So if you're referencing this as like a tutorial, you don't get lost in your own translation. Um, and then once you have it replicated and working, change it up a lot to, to fit your game. So the condition I have right here is a switch called Home Farm 1 Planted. So create that switch. It doesn't have to be 62, just whatever. Um, and then give it the image of the 0 to 10. Add a new page, and now we're going to create a variable called plant1 progress bar. And we're going to make sure that that is checked as a condition, and if that is greater than or equal to 10, then we're going to make this show the second image of the bar being just a little bit fuller. And that's essentially what we're going to be repeating for the rest of this. So tab 3 is the same variable, except now we're, set, we're uh, changing the number so that it's looking for greater than or equal to 20. And if it is, you know, it goes a little bit bigger. Use the bar is a little bit more full. Do the same thing for here, 30, and check the fourth iteration of your bar. The fifth iteration, the sixth, the seventh. 
the eighth, the ninth, we're using increments of 10 on the same variable and adding the image. So I'm uh, going to blow through this real quickly. You, you see what's happening right here. And at the end, if it's greater than or equal to 100, then the bar is completely full. And that is the smallest of the three events. Cool, one down. The second one will be the actual event that stores the way the plant looks. Like if we decide uh, to grow strawberries compared to like potatoes or something. It's better if you keep this event away from the player just so that they don't uh, interact with other things. Uh, on the first page, once again I recommend you keep the names of the variables and switches the same until you replicate the system and then change them up if you would like to. So create a variable called home farm 01 phase and check to see if it's greater than 4. I'm using 4 types of crops but I'm also using 4 stages of growth. You'll see that inside of the common event. Don't worry about why it's for here too much. Just kind of put it in and then you'll see why by the time we're finished. Um, inside of the contents of the first page, we're going to make a condition and we're going to um, we're going to use one variable to control the type of plant we're growing. So if it is one, then we know we're growing, say, strawberries. If it's two, we're going to be growing potatoes. If it's three, et cetera, et cetera. And so we're going to, I recommend, once again, you name it exactly the same and then change it later if you like to. So create a variable, call it home farm 01 crop type, and make its condition and the conditional branch be set um, to one. So if it's one, then what we're going to do is use set event location. So we're going to select this event and we're going to put it directly over the third event that we're going to create. So this event is going to be placed on top of the dirt that you plant your plants in. So this is the one that is out of the way until the plant is finished growing and then it's, it's moved on top of. So you have two events stacked on top of each other. And then we're going to control self switch A and turn it on. We'll also include an else handler for every other iteration of um, crop type. So if you have 10 different types of plants, this will be longer. I only have four types of plants that you can grow, so this is what it is. So on the else handler, you do another conditional branch. It's the same thing. You can kind of copy paste it, put it inside the else handler and change it. If home farm 01 crop type is equal to two, set the event location to um, the same location because it's the same, same thing is happening except this time we're going to control self switch B. So self switch B is going to be for this next page and what it looks like. If you want to have more than four you can use a Yanfly plugin to have as many self switches as you like. I've decided to take out some complexity and limit this to only four plants so that we don't need another plugin to make this work. It's already complicated enough. So with this system without any other plugins, you can have four crop types, but if it's very easy to actually add another plugin and make it so that you have as many crop types as you would prefer to have. So if the crop, uh, like I said, repeat this process in the else handler, do the same thing. If farm01 crop type is three, set the event location to the same thing and turn on self switch C and do the same thing for four, same location, self switch D and end, end, end. On the second page, we have the same variable with the same phase, being making sure that it's in the last phase before we show the actual image. And this one is for when we select the first crop type. And for me, the first crop type looks like this image, and it's using self switch A. So when we go to this, this will be after the plant is finished growing. So we're going to prompt the player with, would you like to harvest your plant, and then show choices and then you can add arbitrary things like um, animations and sound effects if you like to make it more flashy. I've opted in to do some of that so it feels a little bit better. I'm also using a Galv um, plugin to make, sh make the text pop up from the event location instead of on the top, middle, or bottom like a normal show text would because I think it just looks a little bit better but it's up to you. So after you show choices and you do your arbitrary things, what you want to do is control a variable, call it crop harvest amount, and set this to a random number between one and the maximum amount of crops you want to harvest from one plant cycle, from one 
growing a plant from zero to 100 percent do you want them to only harvest one then you you can just skip this if you want them to maybe they grow like four potatoes or five potatoes so you just set this variable to a random number between one and the maximum number of things you want to award the player um, randomly and then you need to do that change the items for the player adding the item that they grow that they've you know the seed that the plant that's correlated to the seed that they planted in this case it's fresh carrot and then we're going to change it by the variable that we just randomized once again let the player know what's going on I'm using some um, Yanfly um, message corp plugin commands to show a variable and show the item of an icon so since I know that what I'm awarding has this uh, is this item in the database I know it's 47 and I also want to reference variable 69 because that's the amount right here that we've awarded so when the player checks this you won't know exactly how many they got so you can just tell them to read the value that's in that variable and then show that item and the icon for it right there and once again the galves pop out text so that it doesn't show up in a big box it's in a little box then we want to set this event location back to where it is out of the way um, in my case it's over here um, so that it can restart this cycle we need to do a couple more things we're going to control the variable to reset the phase we're going to look in the common event right now after we finish this to look at how the phase changes and how the timer works and etc but just do this pretty much exact for now and then change it later once you have it working create a new variable home farm 01 phase if you don't already have it you should already have it and set that to zero and then do another one for plant 01 progress bar and set the progress bar back to zero then if you would like to award some um, experience you can do that you could also do that by making the entire process randomized and call a common event that that awards experience so we'll look at the farm experience reward common event before we jump into the main timer event um, if you want to add experience you don't actually need a common event I'm just doing that since I'm replicating this over and over it's easy for me to change things by changing one common event instead of changing all of the events that I'm awarding experience in so that's a good little trick you can do if you're gonna repeat the same process like zoom in the camera or award experience over and over but you're not 100 percent sure on how much zoom or how much experience you can just add that functionality inside of a common event and then and then call that common event from multiple events and if you want to change all of those events all you have to do is change the common event to change all of those things we're going to turn the self switch A off and then when they say wait for later it's actually going to do nothing so we're going to repeat this right for every other uh, type of plant if we're growing this type of plant the potatoes everything is the same except for the plant that we're awarding the item that we're referencing um, and the switch that we're turning off so you do the same thing so this is for self switch B and make sure that it's it's pretty much the same except the item icons different and we're turning off self switch B at the end here and we can look on the next page four it looks like a lot but it's only a couple things right on this one we're awarding a different item we're changing the um, item icon so the player knows that they're getting that item and we're changing a different switch the rest is the same and finally on page five it's the same thing except the conditions are different right self switch um, the item that's awarding is being different, the notification of that item is different, and the switch that we're turning off is different. And that's it. Make sure all of these tabs have save event location so that if you leave the map and come back, it stays the same. All right, you still with me? Hopefully you're still here. Um, it's not overly complicated, but I can understand it's a lot to absorb if you're watching somebody else do it than creating it yourself. Um, but yeah, if you're still here, congratulations, you're doing great, we're pretty much almost there. Let's look at the main event. So on the farm plot, here's where you're going to have like the dirt plot. So here on the dirt plot, we have the main event. I'm also naming my um, events 
as appropriate as I can, home farm plot one. And let's just start at the top. You have no conditions for this, it's going to be action button, same as characters. And at the top, you're going to make it so that the player can um, interact with it. So when they interact with the action button, we're going to let the player know what they see. They see an empty plot of land and ask them if they'd like to plant something here. And then we're going to show a choice. So we can either let them plant seeds or do nothing. When they do nothing, then obviously nothing happens. right? And when they decide to plant seeds, we're going to do a couple of things. So we're going to do some jumping to labels, but first we're going to check to see if they have carrot seeds. So this is one conditional branch. Create a conditional branch and on tab 4 select the item that you're going to use. So you'll have to make a few items in your database now for the types of seeds. I recommend you start with 4 but you can do more later. You can add more later. So for the first one I've got here is carrot seeds. We're also going to need to check uh, an else branch. So if the party can, if the party has a carrot seed, then it'll continue, and but we'll have an else branch if they don't. So if they do, then we're going to use a jump to label. And here, when you jump to label, if you haven't used them before, um, it's a way to move around the code without running everything in the event. Um, the one stipulation that it has is it's uh, very, it's verbatim. It's going to be cap sensitive. So whatever label you name your section of code and whenever you jump to it you need to specifically type that in exactly the same so um, like I said I recommend you name everything exactly the same as I did and then change it later after you've got it working so type in select seed no spaces and we're gonna jump to that label we will add it later don't worry that it doesn't exist on the else handler we're going to basically do the same thing we're gonna make a conditional except we're gonna check for the second seed instead of the first seed in this case I'm using potato seeds and an else handler then, if they do have potato seeds, then jump to label select seed on the else handler. Repeat this process for your third seed, I'm using strawberries, and your fourth seed, I'm making cabbage. On your final else handler, this would only um, occur when the player has no seeds at all. So they don't have any of the four seeds, the, this else handler will trigger then it, we're going to let the player know, hey, come back when you have some seeds to plant because you're trying to plant seeds but you don't have any yet. And then we're going to jump to a new label. We'll use jump to label, except this time we're going to type in end event, and you can do that verbatim. Um, you don't actually have to name it this. This isn't a special code or anything. This is just the label that we're going to use for the next section of the code. So whatever you jump to, you have to label the end of your event that same thing. So once again, I recommend you just specifically do it the same and then change it later. So jump to label end event, no um, spaces. And then at the very, is it at the very end? It's not at the very end. So at the end of the show choices, when we start it. So let me show you this. We're showing choices and then we're doing this little branch, right? At the end of that, so it won't be at the very bottom, but it'll be at the end of the show choices. If you're starting this from the top, then it will probably be at the end so far. We're going to create a label. So underneath this section, I'm going to try to scroll one more time, because, you know, if you don't have this in exactly the right order, it could cause problems. At the end of this show choice, conditional branch, create a label and call it select seed. Now this is where the player is going to be jumping to once they have a seed to select. Then we're going to uh, we're going to add a, an event and the contents called select item. Now here is where we're going to show item type of hidden item B. Remember when I asked you to create um, your four seed types? Um, if you didn't select hidden item B, that's fine. Just go into your database and make sure that the item types are set to hidden item B. Um, it doesn't necessarily have to be like this, but once again, I recommend you do it the way that I did it, and then if you get it working, change it up so you know the less you stray from the path, the more likely you'll, you'll replicate it correctly. And so change them in the, in the database to hidden item B, and then use a variable, we'll have to create a new one at this point, called seed selected. And now what we're going to do is 
reference the database. So I'm going to look in the database. We're going to come right back to this event. But in the database, where we have our seeds, under items, at 46 for me, I have carrot seed. And you can see the item type that we were just talking about, hidden item B. This is where I'm asking you to switch this to a hidden item. So that when you select item, it doesn't show you a list of 100 items that you've got. It only shows you the seeds that you have in your game, though. Because all of your seeds will be hidden item Bs. So when you select item, it's only showing you seeds that you can plant. It looks cleaner. That's, the way I, that's why I did it that way. But... For me, it's 46. For you, it'll be a different number. So here's where you won't copy it exactly, most likely. Wherever you put in the database for your item, for your seeds, this is the number we're going to reference next. So keep in mind, for me, this is 46. You put it, uh, you keep in mind the number that you're going to use for your seeds. I've got 46, because we're going to need to know those numbers for the next part. So we're going to create a series of conditional branches here. Inside this first one, you're going to select a variable because the variable that you're using is the seed selected one for hidden item B. And what that's going to do is store a number inside that variable of seed selected based on its location in your database. So remember, I'm storing um, seed selected 46 uh, 48, 4, 50, and 53. Why am I selecting that? It's because, let me see, oh yeah, because we have carrot seeds and then the carrot, potato seeds and then the potato, strawberry seeds and the strawberry, and then cabbage seeds. So I'm referencing just the seed numbers, 46, 48, 50, and 53. Those are my seed numbers. Once again, yours will be different depending on where your seeds are in the database. So it's going to store that number inside that variable. So all we have to do now is check that variable to see if it is equal to that number. So if the player selected item 46, that we've already seen that they actually have that item, and they've selected that item, so we'll make a conditional branch seed selected equal to the item number of your seed, of your first seed. We're also going to select create an else branch right here. Then what we're going to do, we know they have the seed, and we know that they selected the seed, so we're going to change items and reduce the uh, value of the seeds. We're going to take one from the player, basically. So we take them, and then we're going to control a variable. We're going to set our crop type. So this is a variable. We may have already created this. If not, create a variable called home farm 01 crop type. You may be wondering why I'm using 0, 1 in a lot of these variable names, and that's because you'll need a, a specific variable for every plot of land. So say you want to have a huge farm, then you're going to be replicating this system uh, with mostly copy-pasting, but you'll have to create new instances of variables for every time you see 0, 1 in one of these things. It'll be 0, 2 for your next one, 0, 3. At the end, I'll show you the second one to show you what's different in between the first and the second. They're mostly the same thing. So once you come up with the system a single time, creating the second one is much easier. You just have to remember to create its own variables. Set that to 1 for the first seed type, and then we're going to make a new switch. We're going to call this switch Home Farm 01 Planted and turn it on. You may have already made this based on conditions from other events. If you already have it, just use that. Showing animation is arbitrary. Um, I recommend you do, though, so that it feels better for the player. On the else handler, saying, if the player did not select carrot seeds, they instead selected potato seeds, or whatever your instance of seeds are, it will be different. Remember, the number that we're looking for in this conditional branch is the item location inside the item database for that seed. So for me, the next type of seed is stored in location 48. So potato seeds are item 48. So when we do this seed selected, it's going to give you the option, if you have them, to show them uh, under hidden item B, and then it'll store the value of that location inside seed selected, just like it did here. We're going to repeat that same thing, right? So if it's 48, we're going to, we know that they have potato seeds, and we know that they selected potato seeds, so reduce potato seeds from the party's inventory. And now change that variable, home farm 01 crop type, 
Set it to 2, so this is we know it's our second type. And we're going to turn on that same switch, Home Farm 01 Planted, turn it on, show your flashy animations. On the third else handler, the same thing happens, except we change the number to reference the new type of seed, and we change the type to the next number. Home Farm 01 Crop Type is 3, turn the switch on, and flashy stuff. Do the same thing for your last seed, and if you went on further and had more crop types using Yenfly's self switches and uh, self variables uh, plugin, you can continue this process as many times as you need. As you need. Um, but for the simplified version, we end it right here with the with the fourth plant. If your fourth one is selected, reduce that, change the type to the fourth type. Turn on the switch and show your flash. On the final else handler, if for some reason you have a hidden IB, uh, hidden uh, item B. If for some reason you have a hidden item B that's uh, showing up and you try to plant that hidden item B, um, we need to have a handler for that. So on the else handler of the last nested one, we're going to let the player know that won't grow here. So it doesn't, you know, it doesn't take that item from the player, it doesn't plant anything, it doesn't further the farming system. It basically does nothing and we let the player know that that's not going to do anything. So if we have like say a key for a door and we try to plant that here, it doesn't crash the game, it doesn't cause any problem, it just says it won't grow here and nothing else happens. And then all of that ends, and of course when they say not right now, nothing happens. At the end of the event, we have another jump to label in here somewhere. So um, we need to include that label. So we're going to add a label like we did for the first part and make sure that this is expelled exactly the same uh, called end event as we um, reference the jump to. So after we've done this, you jump to end event, and after you've selected your seed, you jump to seed selected. This is a, a way to make sure that it everything, uh, the flow control is exactly the way it's supposed to be, so the, the player doesn't get locked up in menus and it has repeatability. It doesn't work. The, it, it doesn't have a problem where, um, without these jump to labels, you might have a problem um, where it works the first time and then it doesn't work the second time. So, um, use the, using the label exactly like I did, you shouldn't have a problem. That's the first page. Let's jump to the second page. Trust me, it gets easier. The hard part is over. It's easier from here. If you're still with me, congratulations. You basically almost have your system done. So, there's a little bit of math involved here. And you can change this, but I recommend, like I said, you keep it exactly the same and then change it later on once you have it working. So, um, it's going to take a matter of a few minutes from start to finish to grow the whole crop, not counting times in your main menu and not counting the time inside of battles. You can change this number, but if you want everything to work uh, with your timers, just keep everything the same and then change them once you understand how the math works. So, the conditions for the second page is home farm 01 planted switch beyond. The image is the same. We're going to control three variables and then give some show text to the player. The first one is we're going to create a variable called crop status report and we're going to equal that to the home farm 01 timer. If you haven't created the home farm 01 timer yet, do that now. It's another variable you'll need for each plot. This is going to be the ticker, the timer, because we're going to jump into the common event next and this is what's going to be incremented every frame of the game. So set your crop status report to that timer. If you ever come across a variable that you don't have yet, just create it and then reference it as shown in this tutorial. The second thing we're going to do is we're going to manipulate the crop status report by multiplying that by 100. So let's look at the first thing. We're going to set this variable to another variable. Operation of set to the home farm timer. If you don't have the home farm timer created, if you don't have that one created. The second thing is multiplying this number by 100. So we select the crop status report, operation of multiply, and set it to the constant of 100. And you may be wondering why this is dividing by 21,600. I'll give you a basic TLDR. Every frame of the game is one. It's going to count as one. And every second of the game, considering your game is running at 60 frames per second, is going to be 60 incrementations. Um, so for a matter of one second, 60 is going to, to pass. And if you want a minute, that's 60 times 60, that's 3,600. So, 
we're going to divide by the number, the total number of minutes that we're going to need, the total number of frames based on the, no, the time we want. So, like I said, just use this number for now and then change it later, right? So, use uh, a variable crop status report. We're still manipulating that, but now we're dividing it by 21,600. Let the player know that their plants uh, are growing and they are variable 70% of the way done. Now, variable 70 will be different for you if your crop status report is not 70. So it doesn't have to be variable number 70. It's only showing 70 here because my crop status report variable is location 70. So the difference between mine and yours, even if you're following it nearly exactly, this will be different right here. So they are variable number whatever crop status report variable is. Put that number here and then percent of the way done. Easy, right? Okay. So the next page is the same switch condition, but now we have another condition. We're going to, you should have already had this variable created, home farm 01 phase, if not create it now, and make sure that it's greater than or equal to one for the condition. And the same thing is going to happen, except now we're going to do something a little bit different. You can essentially copy paste the contents of this to this next page and make this condition and change this. So now your Crop status report is no longer going to be set to the variable of the home farm one timer. It's going to be set to variable um, 51 plus 50. Wait, variable 51 might be different for you. So let me look at what variable 51 is so that we can get this exactly right for you. Control variables in my game, variable 51 is home farm 01 timer. Okay, so home farm 01 timer is 51. So this is setting crop status report to variable 51, home farm 01 timer. What we're doing here on the third page is the same thing, but we're adding an amount of frames to it. So in order to do these, both of these transactions or both of these interactions in the same thing, we're going to do a control variables, except we're going to do a script call. So we're going to encapsulate dollar sign game capital V on variables dot value of whatever number of variable that your crop, uh, that your your um, timer is. 50, so whatever variable number that your home farm 01 timer is. Okay, hopefully that doesn't confuse you. You put in the number for whatever your home farm uh, timer, home farm one timer is right there. This number is, um, I don't want to get into why it's this number, um, just use this number exactly. It's based on the number of frames that tick by, and then change it later if you feel like you want to change the timing on it. So plus 5,400. We're setting it to this value now. So setting it to the script call of your timer plus 5,400 frames. Then we do the same thing. We multiply that by 100 and divide it by 21,600 and let the player know that they are whatever crop status report number percent of the way done. So 70 for me, maybe something different for you. On the third, uh, on the fourth page, we're going to have essentially the same thing, but two things will change. The number down here will now be for if we're in phase two or greater, and this number will double. So everything is the same, copy paste it, and change this from one to a two, change this from 5,400 to 10,800 frames, and then do this for the next page. Copy paste that again. Make this for um, fa variable for three or greater, so we're in phase three, and change this number by adding another 5400, so it's still the same timer one variable set value plus 16,200. So the first one is just the farm one timer, the second one is the farm one timer plus 5400, then it's farm one timer plus 10,800, then farm one timer plus 16,200. The rest of the stuff stays the same except for the conditions. The final page is easy because you don't need any more math. You just change the variable to be if you're in phase four. Also, you can change the image as you go through. I have different, um, I, I actually have room to add more image changes. So you can show more growth. I have a blank one. I have one with a little bit of green dots and then there's more green dots than yellow dots. And so you can actually add more um, image phases of growth in here if you want to. But you don't even have to do that if you don't. You can just be dirt until it's done. 
So this last page will be if it's greater than or equal to 4. So if we're in phase 4 of home farm 01 phase, just let the player know that they're 100% of the way done. They're all the way done. And this will reference just with these. This will go up um, as we do the, the common event. So that's all of the events. Let's look inside the common event and tie all this together and make this system work. So go into your common events. This is the last, this is the last step. Um, but before we do that, I'll show you the gain experience, the optional gain experience. If you want to have the player optionally gain experience, um, and you don't know how much and you might want to change it, you can create a common event to award experience. So I've created a common event called farm experience reward and it creates a random um, value. You create a, you can control a variable, create a new one called farm experience and set it to a random number between whatever you want and whatever you want, however much experience you want to give to the player for harvesting a plant. This is being called at the end of the event. Then I'm doing gab windows to let the player know that they gained experience and when playing sound effects. And then I'm actually awarding that experience by doing change experience to the whole party using the variable. You can also bypass the variable and all the gab stuff and just show, uh, just give experience based on an arbitrary number. So this is optional. Okay, so the first common event, this is for the progress bar. So once again, I'm going to ask that you copy this exactly and change it later depending on um, how you want to change it. I would prefer that you get it working exactly like I have it and then change it um, so that you have less issues later on. So we're going to use these. You're going to wonder why these numbers are what they are. Just use these numbers and then change them later on. Um, so I'm using a weight of 216 frames. Uh, create a new uh, common event, call it plant one progress bar. It is a parallel trigger. So once this switches on, home farm 01 planted, which you should already have, um, this will just keep running. And every 216 frames, it's going to add one to a new variable called plant 01 progress bar. So we wait 216 frames, and then we control a variable adding one to it. What this is doing is making it so that this progress bar adds to the number that we're checking, this variable. So as 2160 frames go by, we go from phase 0 to phase 1, and then we go to phase 2 after another 2160 frames. The numbers are for that specific reason so that they line up with how long I'm making the timers last. You can change them all completely around once you understand how the system works. But for now, copy it exactly. Wait two 16 frames, control a variable, um, plant one progress bar, add one to it. Make sure that you have a parallel home farm one planted. That's the progress bar. Now the actual timer, the last thing guys, home stretch. Create a common event called 01 seed planted or something very similar to that. Now this is the last thing that we have to do. So how we're doing this now is we're creating a timer that cycles through 1 to 5400 and then it's adding to a phase counter. And then we have four phases that are other things so that we have the, pl the plants looking different as they get bigger. So you have this appearance of growth over time. And I'm not making full uh, use of all the four phases because I'm only showing three images. So I could even show more graphical fidelity if I had more artwork put into it. And you can, you could essentially change this to have 10 phases and have 10 different animations of growth. But I would like to ask that you just copy it exactly and then change it once you get it working. Um, that way I get less people saying, how come it doesn't work? It works perfectly fine. It's just a little, little complex. So, zero, 01 seed planted. It's a parallel trigger. And we're going to create, a, you should already have the switch, home farm 01 planted. So, this is the same switch that controls the, the, um, the progress bar. And it also controls this event. And what we're going to do right from the top is the, the heart of this thing. It's going to run every frame of the game. And it's going to control this variable. Home farm 01 timer, we're going to add one constant to it. And then we're going to make a conditional check. We're going to say, is home farm 01 timer greater than or equal to 5400? And if it is, then we're going to make another conditional. We're going to say, okay, what phase are we in? So we're going to make a conditional branch checking the variable of home farm 01 phase. 
If we're in phase three, we're going to check an else branch right here as well. Then we're going to control a couple of variables. So if we've reached the timer um, from zero to 5400 and we're in phase three, then we want to switch to home farm phase four. So once again, just copy it exactly. It makes it easier for me to teach you to if you just kind of do this. So control variable, set home farm 01 phase to four and control home farm 01 timer back to zero. You can optionally play gab window sound effects and if home farm 01 crop type is equal to one, make a conditional branch right here, then we're gonna do a plugin command for gab text, letting the player know that, hey, one of your plants has finished growing and use the icon of the image that you want. This is optional. You don't have to do the gab window thing, but you can do gab window stuff here. So this, the, all of this next part is gab window optional stuff. Uh, else, if it's crop type two, then you do the same thing, but you're showing a different icon saying your carrots have finished growing, your potatoes have finished growing. Uh, else, your crop type, if your crop type home farm 01 crop type is equal to three, using else handler, plug in command, show the text, and then at the end, end nothing. At the very end of um, the, the optional show uh, gab window, do a plugin command for force gab so that it, um, instead of show gab, use force gab. I recommend you do plugin command force gab. That way it clears the queue if you have a bunch of things like you're harvesting other stuff and you've got a lot of other stuff going on. It does show and it doesn't um, delay it. So just use force gab. Uh, once again, that this whole section is optional, but it does add a little bit of extra uh, polish to it. So you might want to use the gab window from Yanfly. Then what we're going to do, this is not optional, control switches and set home farm 01 planted off. Because this is a big one. This is going to say we've harvested the plant and now we don't need to have the, we have a plant growing cycle going on. So we're going to turn home farm 01 planted off on the else handler. Uh, so where is this main else handler? This is the main else handler for if we are finished the timer while we're in phase three. So if the timer is, 50, is greater than or equal to 5400, but we're on phase two. If, uh, if home farm 01 phase is two, then it's very simple. Uh, at this point, all we're doing is controlling a variable home farm 01 phase, setting that to three, and reset the timer back to zero. So the timer goes from zero, and every frame it adds one until it gets to 5400, and then it will reset the timer back to zero, but increment the phase. So we're from phase zero to phase one, and then count up to 5,400 again. From zero to phase two, from, from one to two, from two to three, three, and then when three finishes, it goes into four, and four controls other things, but it also gives the notification process. So I will work my way down, so if you're copying verbatim. Underneath the else handler, if home farm 01 phase is two, set home farm 01 phase to three, reset the timer. The next else inside of here, if home farm 01 phase is one, set home farm 01 phase to two, and reset the timer. Don't forget to reset the timer. Else, if home farm 01 phase is zero, set the home farm 01 phase to one, and reset the timer back to zero. The rest of it should just end and all the way down. You did it. You basically did it. All you have to do now is find artwork for uh, an image that will work as your timer. Um, I have one of these available somewhere. I think it's on the Discord. Yeah, you can download one that will work for this inside of the RPG Maker portal. If you go down to, here we go. If you go and uh, I'll put a link in the description to the RPG Maker Portal Discord as well as my own Discord. If you jump down to the graphical creation selection of RPG Maker Portal, you can click on this image, open original, right click it and save it as um, a PNG. Put that in your IMG characters and you can use this image as your timer, as your, as your um, progress bar. So shout out to RPG Maker Portal and you'll use that there. You can create artwork for your dirt plot and have the little green grass come out or you can find stuff on open game art and uh, there's also several free resources you can use for artwork on RPG Maker web forums. Guys and girls, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for tuning into this tutorial. That's gonna do it for the basic 
farm system. Basic, I know. If you wanted to replicate this for more than one plot, you kind of copy-paste the whole system, except all of the instances where the variables are named 0, 1, you'll have to create a new switch for 0, 2, and for all of the things that have um, all of the variables and switches. Whenever I reference something that says 0, 1, home farm 0, 1, for the next one, you'll have to reference home farm 0, 2. And the number will change for each timer, right? Home farm 02 timer. So you copy paste the majority, but everything that has an 01, you'll instead create a new instance of and call it 02. And, and that'll work just the same. Plant 02 progress bar, right? And it's, it's pretty straightforward. I made it that way so that you know what you can reuse and what you can't. Anything that has 0, 1 and you want to have it replicated, just make a new instance of that variable and call it 0, 2. And you can see the common events also have to be their own thing because they're being controlled by different switches. So I have eight plots of land and it's essentially the same system eight times over with their own switches and variables. And you can do this as many times as you want, guys. So that's going to do it for this tutorial. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. Uh, hopefully you stuck around and, uh, and learned something new. Um, and I'd love to see what you guys create from this system. This is a template. Modify it however you would like to do it. Um, this took me a while, several weeks, to kind of get right and test before I made the tutorial. And I'm happy with the way it turned out. It's definitely stronger and better and um just a more solid system than the first tutorial I put out a couple years ago with a farming system. So hopefully you guys uh, like this. If you have any questions, put them in the comments below. Join the Discord is a much faster way to get a response. Um, I really appreciate each and every one of you. Thank you so much for the support. You've helped me through this tough time on GoFundMe and uh, every other place that you've been uh, a backer. Come hang out in the Discord. I'd love to chat with you guys. Uh, we'll see you guys in the next tutorial. Love you very much. Bye-bye.